Hello, hello, back again, or I hope I'm back again, at least. Um, who knows for certain? Uh, I just need to see whether I'm now going to be on Amazon again as well. Not quite sure what happened there. Obviously, the uh, live streaming gods were just wanting to dick around with me for some reason. Who knows? I don't know. What can you do? Not a lot. Uh, so just making sure we're not on full HD. That should be good. Go back live on Amazon again. And hopefully we are now back live on Amazon with any luck. Uh, let me just see. Let me just refresh some stuff. Uh, so let's uh, type a message into Amazon. Hi, everyone. We are back. Cool. So we are back on Amazon after a little bit of a little bit of a hiatus there, cool. I have to say. Um, so if you're watching on Amazon, please do um, unmute your sound and that'll be really cool. Um, that'll be good. We're on B Live. We should be on all the other channels that we believe we're on. So let's just do a quick check with uh, Facebook. Turn my turn the ring off on my phone and let us see so we are now live that looks good hallelujah right where were we before we were so rudely interrupted by uh, by the tech gods right welcome welcome to the uh, the ketonic cooking show on a friday we we're obviously a little bit running a little bit later today because we had a bit of an issue earlier on so thanks for for staying with us on that so really do appreciate it and thanks for watching on amazon as well now if you're watching on facebook youtube all the different locations then you can come and join me on amazon live this is an amazon is where we hang out these days it's a very cool place to hang out and uh, let me just put up my little live shopping element and that way i can just drop a link in uh, nickwood dot live would uh, would do it just fine and dandy so uh, this will drop the link in the comments if you're watching on Facebook or if you're watching on YouTube. Um, so yeah, just click that link and you'll be magically whisked to the uh, the Amazon live streaming page, which is uh, one of the coolest things on the planet. But also, uh, if you do stay on the other platforms, and I've got another really cool thing to show you later as well. So in today's today's cooking show, uh, we are talking about what to do is talk about some. Uh, cookbooks again that uh, I use um, but also I have one of the joys of being a, a live stream influencer on Amazon is um, someone saw me baking bread a couple of weeks ago and they have sent me some beautiful bread uh, proving baskets and I'll be telling you all about those as well um, and one of the things we're going to be doing is actually making some uh, these are perfect for sourdough and artisan breads um, so we need to make some a sourdough culture, a sourdough starter. So um, that's what we're going to be doing today. And as part of that, I've got a cookbook. But then also I wanted to talk to you about another cookbook, which is a little rare gem called Flavor Thesaurus, which is it pairs all these different beautiful flavors together. So if you wanted to be creative, if you want to think about, oh, what, what flavors go with what? You know, the easy ones, cheese and onion cheese, ham and pickle, those sorts of things. This book pairs all sorts. I had a beautiful dinner the other day and it was tuna, but the the thing that piqued it was that it had, we made a beautiful, so I'd like to cook the nice little tuna steak and then added this beautiful uh, garlic oil. So we made a little lovely garlic oil on the tuna, goes well with oily fish. Um, and then a little tomato salsa uh, type thing to go with it absolutely gorgeous so if you're if you're interested in that let us know and uh and we shall carry on but first things first i just uh, have to put it in my in my carousel if you're watching on on uh on amazon uh, uh, is uh, we're going to kick off with uh this amazing book called a taste of my life uh, by raymond this one here this is absolutely superb 
and it's not just a cookery book it is basically it's, it's his life story as well a lot of cookery books can be can be very um can be very very you know just just the food and the recipes and that's nice because you get nice pictures but but this one is a little bit different i'm gonna share it. it's in the carousel on amazon um but the also thing because i'm using be live is that i can actually drop this in in here as well oops um gosh it's really going well today isn't it my uh <laughs> my amazing tech come on push resource to staging Oh, right, okay. Now it's <laughs> clicking the buttons. It just wanted to go a little bit slowly. So that, there you go. This is it. Taste of My Life by Raymond Blanc. Obviously, I've been to the Raymond Blanc Les Manoirs au Cap Saison. Um, so, uh, yeah, and it's basically, it, it talks about his, his life. So um, it's his life, life today has been defined by a quest for culinary perfection. Uh, driven by his passion for great food and brilliant cooking, he's been where other chefs fear to tread. Now, in a taste of my life, he tells the story of his quest and shares the secrets he has learned. And he is um, he is actually uh, he is a, he's actually um, trained some of the the best chefs in the world: Marco Pierre White, Gordon Ramsay, to name but a few. Um, and is it, he talks about. Uh, let's run through quickly. Taste of a... Yeah, so he talks about uh, village life, uh, the seasons uh, that he experienced in France, uh, Christmas delicacies. Uh, it's just, you know, it just all the things. So where he started his very first little, very first little restaurant, I think it was like a 40-seater restaurant, his very first one. And uh, he went on to... Uh, the, that actually that 40 seater restaurant actually um had thank you corinda <laughs> yeah thanks corinda i can now see it's working hallelujah um so yeah so this is um so so yeah so uh, yeah, going back to the restaurant um, that he had in oxford 40 seater that's where he got his first michelin star he then went and got the hotel uh, the le manoir au cap saison which is where the cookie school is and where i got my chef white's from um but yeah so this talks about his life but then at the end of each chapter he has he has uh he has actually has the recipe so there's no pictures but it's a recipe and the thing about a good recipe is that you don't need pictures um and you know he has you know there's a planning ahead thing uh there's a methodology and there's chef's notes um i made a brilliant uh let's try to find it I made a brilliant um, uh, clafluti, clef, strawberry clafluti, I think. It was. Um, yes, that's it. Cherry clafluti. That was it. So, again, there was no, there was no pictures. It was just the recipe, the chef's actual recipe, which he'd written, um, and with the notes. And then when I got his other book, uh, French Cooking, the same recipe was in it with a picture. And mine that had done without any pictures at all was looking exactly the same. So if you, you know, if you like cooking and you like a little bit more than just a recipe, then I yeah, can't recommend it enough. So let me hide that back down there. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks Corinda it's okay because what I did Corinda was I dropped those those links that I dropped in they were their Amazon links as well so you know if I'm, uh, I'm live streaming on Amazon and 20 pounds is not bad either as you say um but uh, but yeah if you go any of these links you that you click anything in the carousel yes I do get a very small affiliate commission um but I only promote and talk about things that I use and have used and love so that is a great book to start off with. Um, obviously, it's very, very French inspired. Um, and if it's good enough to teach 
Marco and uh, Gordon and the like, then I can't be that bad, can it? It's got to be, got to be good. Um, right, let us go on to. Um, first of all, let me do a little, almost like a little unboxing. And this is what came in the post today. Ah, oh. <laughs> hi, Ros. Lovely to see you. I just I caught a little bit of yours earlier on while I was just uh, setting up, so that was really good. Um, yeah, what I'm cooking today? Well, I'm actually going to do some. We're going to do some some things with eggs, but I was just running through some little bit of bread. We're actually going to make our own sourdough culture um, because I got this little box today, um, and it is it's now in the carousel. I shall just drop the link in for people watching on on Facebook land as well. Uh, yeah, it's that. Uh, yeah, these beautiful, so beautiful bread proving set. So this was when I was making bread a couple of weeks ago. Um, this is for artisan bread proving. So I'll just take that uh, all here, all available on, on Amazon. Um, <laughs> ha, 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 hi, hi, Peter. Oh, okay, cool. Um, and yeah, so here they are. These are little uh, Banaton proofing baskets there. So put one of them out. So what's inside? One proofing basket, one cloth liner, two removable wooden bottom patterns, and one dough scraper, which is really cool. So I've got a dough scraper, always handy. Um, and yeah, at the bottom, so you can make your make your bread and then you can actually put patterns on the bread as well how cool is that um so we've got this one oh, lovely little heart shaped one if you're making lovely heart bread um and yeah you've got the the proving baton with with the cover and so even even uh, without the cover you've got another little another little uh uh, what's it called? So that is the wooden one goes in there. So you can have that. You can change them around, interchangeable. Uh, what, what a beautiful, beautiful thing. And yeah, nice wooden. Um, yeah, really nice, really lovely. Uh, not quite sure how I now put that. How I now put this back on, <laughs> isn't it? What's that say on the top? Oh, hang on. I've got me. I've got me. <laughs> Hold on, I've got my my auto. Thanks to using BeLive, I've got my auto auto uh, auto comments coming on. So this is all for uh, proving and, and, and making bread. Um, lovely lady uh, Natalia uh, has sent that through. Um, I've got some more in in here, but I shall save those for later. I just want to see what's in in this little bit. Uh, yeah, that's nifty. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nifty, Ross. It is. It is. And uh, I guess you auto believe is also yes. Auto be live is awesome. Oh, look how cute. So yeah, even more removable patterns for the proving baskets. Uh, so we've got little, got little teddy bear. <laughs> how cool is that? Um, and oh. Now, who wants to make unicorn bread? Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. So, in order to actually make these breads, we do actually need to do make some uh, get some proving uh, uh, culture rather, because um, bread won't make itself. And we can do that. The thing I think I like about uh, about sourdough bread is because you, 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 your culture that starts it, the starter culture, it ferments. So. A lot of the uh, the sugar and the carbs uh, will be removed. So if you're going to have bread, this will be the most uh, keto friendly for sure. So um, sorry, I couldn't just move you up there. Let's see, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're stuck on screen for some reason, Grinda. Who knows why? Te technology today is going uh, very strange. Um, yeah, so so that's why it's keto friendly is because we we make the culture and that. Uh, ferments and so the, the the sugar parts of, of that culture um kind of reduced a bit like the same as white wine is is pretty keto friendly 
don't say I told you, but it's true. Um, so yeah, you can have white wine on a keto diet, which is quite very, very nice. Um, so yeah, so the, the sourdough, and of course, all things with uh, with carbs in, in a little bit of a little bit is okay. This is you know we we're talking low carb as opposed to no carb. So uh, we just want some low carbs, just a couple of slices, we'll be fine. So how do we how do we get our culture started? Well, uh, I'm just going to try and move that along. If you're watching on Amazon, thank you so much. Please do hit the follow button. Uh, that would be cool. Then you'll get notifications uh, when I uh, when I'm next on. Um, my little computer seems to be going a little bit slow, but let me show you. There's only one man I go to when there's a uh, when there's some bread to be making. And that is uh, Mr. Hollywood here. So his his link is on the is in the carousel now, highlighted in the carousel. He's also thanks to V Life. He's also his little Amazon links are now in the comments as well. Um, so that's really cool. Um, and as I did say, yeah, I do get a little commission off it, but it doesn't mean the price is any higher. But the reason we go for Paul Hollywood is that he has got uh, a sourdough starter recipe. So this is what I'm going to be making now. So to kick us off, but do let me know if uh, if you've ever made a sourdough yourself, because of course anybody, <laughs> any anyone that's, uh, that's that's got some tips and techniques that they can share, please do share them. Pop them in the in the comments. Uh, oh, Kindle reader, hey Kindle reader, thank you for following. Hi, Kinderita. Thank you, and thank you, Corinda, for for chatting in the uh, in the in the comments as well. So yeah, thank you for following. So we're going to need a glass jar. We are also going to need some. What does Paul say? We need some uh, strong bread flour. Uh, also, he's got uh, organic green grapes and 250 mils of tepid water. Now, you don't have to have grapes. I'm going to change his recipe slightly because you can use apples same thing and it's just to give that sweetness and that acidity and the other thing i'm going to do is i'm actually going to make it i'm going to make it with um oh no, I, I was going to make it with wholemeal i might just change that around can we change it around let me see Let's check. Let's check the recipe. <laughs> Hi, Kindle reader. Thank you so much. So, collect this how do blah blah blah. Um, do, 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 do. Keep it outside the fridge, and you need to refresh it and feed it. So here, yeah, so here we go. So we're going to get the mixture um, into a bowl. We're going to tip it into a large jar, which we have here. Let's um, pull that down so you can see it better. Uh, I need uh, I need sourdough can today, don't I? Uh, yeah, tip the mixture into a large jar of plastic box with an airtight lid. There's room enough for it to rise. Cover and leave to ferment at warm room temperature for three days. You should see the mixture froth up. One tip is to draw a line level with the top of the mixture using black marker pen so you can see how your starter rises and falls. So that'll be quite interesting. Let's um let's have a let's have a go at that. As I say, if you if you've ever done it yourself, please do let me know. Uh, share your share your tips. Uh, first things first, I need a I need to get my bowls out. So uh, and I want 250 grams of strong white bread flour. Luckily, that is exactly what I have here, which is always good. Um, so 250 grams. Let's put the Put the measure on. Okay. That's quite a lot of three. That's actually quite a lot of flour. So pop that back up there. Um, so we also want, uh, we're going to have our grapes and 250 millilitres 
of tepid water. So, and uh, we were talking about tepid water the other day, and tepid water is basically, you know, water that you can put your put your hands into. So, well, 250 of that as well. Check it out. That, yeah, that's tepid. That's just about warm. That's fine and dandy. Um, and I need to chop up some apples as well to go inside. Uh, let's quickly grab an apple, chop it up, pop it in, and uh, and see what happens. So, and this is going to start it all off. Uh, let me move. Oh, hi, Deborah. Thank you for following me. I really do appreciate that. That's really good. Let me bring, in fact, actually, I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring the bread, I'm going to bring the camera over so you can actually see a little bit clearer uh, what I'm doing here. So bear with me while I take half the kitchen with me. Here we go. That's that's more like it. So here we have our apple. So yeah, so we're just gonna chop up an apple. I will just um I'm just gonna peel it as well. I'm not sure the doesn't actually say because of course he's using grapes. So I'm just gonna use this is five to seven seedless grapes he was talking about. So that's probably about an apple size, I reckon. And I'm just going to peel them, chop them up, add them in. Um, as I say, if, you, if you're watching, so this is this is to create our sourdough culture. And this is going to take about a week. So next week, we can actually make some sourdough, uh, which would be pretty cool, using those amazing, um, prove, that amazing proving kit. I mean, I just can't believe that. That's just got so many beautiful little. I can't believe it's got a unicorn. Who's who's up for making unicorn bread next uh, next week? That would be so amazing, so cool. So, so while I'm doing this, if you're if you're watching, uh, I'm on beautifully. I'm on Amazon as a live stream influencer, and uh, and I've been sent. This amazing, beautiful proving kit, uh, and that's why that's why we're making this culture right now. So uh, let's chop up the apple, make it into fairly small pieces. Try not to chop your fingers off as well in the in the process. Good. And so the apples are going to be providing the, the sweetness. So it's the sweetness of the fruit. Um, I don't know why I took the core out. Um, absolutely no need because I'm not actually going to be eating the apple. Um, but this will kick off the fermentation process because there is, you know, there is, you know, yeast naturally occurs and there's natural yeast in the air. So all we're doing is triggering all of that. So. There you go, there's the apple in. And then the 250 mils of water. Add that in. And just give that a jolly good a jolly good stir. Take the mixture into a large do, 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 do. and add them, pour in the water and mix to combine. So yeah, so we're just mixing that, hope you can see. Yeah, we're just mixing it all in to combine it. interesting mixture even if I do say so myself so here we go um, yeah I've only, I've only actually made sour I made it years ago um, so it's not something I've done for a long long time and so let's keep our fingers crossed that it'll all work out fine <laughs> so uh, so that's good um, cool. Yeah, thanks, Corinda. 
on the you don't don't pop the links into uh into amazon mate that's um that's that's where we already want people to be so <laughs> so that's cool so here's a, a jar i prepared earlier um i made sure it was clean uh piping hot water uh, so these are mixture And actually, it's quite funny. It's it's uh, it it looks it kind of looks alive already. Um, yeah. So there you go. That's um. That's all good. Let's bring the camera back up here. So. Yeah, so this is our that is our little mixture so tip the mixture into a large jar cover and leave to ferment so we're going to leave it for three days and hopefully so what i'll do so what i'll do is i'll i'll mark it and then over the next few days, I'll, I'll I'll take photos so we can see the process and, and see that it's working. And so we can share that uh, next week and I'll, I can put the photos up on the Keto Nick uh, Facebook page as well. So there you go. That is our culture. We need to keep that in a room temperature. It doesn't have to be cold. It doesn't have to be dark. I think. Yeah. So it just says leave it to ferment at room temperature for three days. You see the mixture froth up. One tip is to draw a line with the top of the mixture using a black marker pen so you can see how your starter rises. So then after three days, the mixture should have risen, should be bubbly and slightly darker. Um, and when you open the lid, it will smell distinctly sour. <laughs> this shows that your starter is undergoing a lactic fermentation and it's active. If it isn't working, then discard half the mixture and add 100 grams of flour and 100 milliliters of water and more chopped grapes and leave it for another day or two. So it says, once the starter is active, discard half the mixture and stir in another 100 grams of strong white flour and water, or enough water to keep it the same consistency. This is called refreshing your starter and is what you do to feed the yeast. It needs to be done at least every few days to keep your starter alive. Leave the refreshed starter for at least 24 hours and should bubble up and become thick and almost jelly-like in texture. It is now ready to use to make your sourdough so we should have a starter um yeah so we should have a starter all ready for next friday so we can use our beautiful proving pots and uh and go from there so i'm very pleased with that that's um that's quite cool so i'll have to <laughs> of course what i'll have to do is uh, i'll have to remind my lovely wife debbie that that's a starter mixture no, the camera um, yeah i'll have to remind devs so that she knows it's a starter and not to throw it away because she would take a one look at that and uh, and think that's not for <laughs> that's not for human consumption and it isn't the it isn't just yet so uh, so that's cool um okay Kirthi, that's a very strange message you've put on there um but anyway, thank you. All, all messages are greatly received. So that's our starter dough. And that was with um, Paul Hollywood, um, the master baker. Yes, he really is a master baker, Mr. Hollywood. Um, and again, so he's got some classic breads in here. I mean, if you've never made a bread before, then you know it's full of, of great uh, pictures. I'll move that out of my way. Um, that really take your way through it. So. That was the very first bread I made. Was a beautiful bloomer, um, and again you got the the pictures. And it's amazing what I learned is that uh, oh, thanks, Corinda. Um, I can't remember actually, Corinda. Um, yeah, we've got something. Oh, uh, um, tacos we're doing on Tuesday. Um, yeah, you can actually make dough a lot wetter than I I ever imagined possible. So. That's really good. It's got some great tips. And then what I love about this book is once you've made the bread, you've then got great recipes that you can use the bread with. So 
If we look at our sourdough one as an example, so, so we've got a classic sourdough, and again, got great showing how to make it. And again, look, see, this is the proving baskets exactly as uh, as we have here. So that's really cool. So there's the proving baskets, and so he's got a little uh, little pattern. Uh, he hasn't got any unicorns on his, um, but hey, ho, 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 ho. oh yes. So if we're going to be making sourdough next week, then we can have that with a, a breakfast ham and eggs with grilled tomatoes and ham, eggs and tomatoes, all perfectly okay on a keto diet. So what's not to love about that? With a little slice or maybe two of our beautiful sourdough bread. So hopefully um, that will work really well. So, um, yeah, and he, let's see, here's another thing that's going to go beautifully. So then you can just add. So we've got basil and coriander sourdough. Yeah, so that's that's really cool. Um, yeah, Corinda, the, the, the book is amazing. If you, if, you want to, if you want to get into baking, it's a cracking book. If you've got Amazon Prime, it will probably be with you the next day. Um, they're not, they wouldn't take long, I don't think, Corinda. So um, it is, it's a... It's a great book. And you've got yum chocolate. <laughs> um, what do you got here? Healthy stuff. Is there any not with healthy? <laughs> well, that's the thing, Corinda. It's um it's that uh, last week we did make the chocolate. So we're we're trying to we're trying to keep it all keep it all 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 steady, all as, as good as we can. So that's Paul Hollywood's bread. Okay. Next thing up, next book off the rank. And this is all about, actually, I'll do just quickly a couple of books. This one here, The Two Greedy Italians. This is one of my favorite, favorite books. Um, having said that, it's not in my carousel. So you just have to take my word for it. That's an amazing book. <laughs> um, OK, two quick ones before we go on to the one I really want to talk about. Um, yeah, this one, Gordon Ramsay's Healthy. Is, I've got so many of his uh, of his books they are untrue um but this one is i actually bought this um yeah i got it from amazon i bought it when i was in australia um he was obviously very big there and uh and i've not got it on my drop in for, on the facebook page um but yeah oh it's, it is basically uh, co-written by mark Sargent, who if you don't know, Mark's another uh, Michelin starred um, chef. And uh, uh, is that by Jamie Oliver? No, no, this is this is Gordon Ramsay, um, Corinda. That's OK. I've got a Jamie one in a minute um, because that's inspired. I've been chatting to my my super Iron Man. Uh, looks healthy, but you've got sticky baked chicken drumsticks. You see, Corinda, you can have healthy uh you can have you can have healthy and and as well as uh as as uh tasty um so you've got oily fish got some great uh sardines um what else have we got there yeah braised pork spiced pork so really some really good healthy often you've got um, beef curry um yeah look at this i've done this one baked sea bass with lemon. So lemon and sea bass um, and a little bit of thyme. Match made in heaven really is. And it's gorgeous. So you've got all these amazing recipes just sitting there to make you um, to make you get hungry. And you've got lots of different things with um, with with mackerel and herrings and dills and things on the barbecue. So so yeah, five ways with with oily fish. So lots of beautiful things. And you've got Creole spice bean and vegetable. Really does, it goes all over the world. It's a bit eclectic, um, even with like a little devil's Caesar, Caesar salad. So if you want healthy, uh, that's a really good one. He's looking very young on the back. It's quite an old book by today's standards. You know, these these chefs, they pump out, you know, so many cookery books, but this one really was, um, was worth getting. Now, uh, I want to talk to you about, we've got another show coming up on Thursdays as well. So we've got Tuesday, 
We've got Tuesday is the, the, the cookery show, the cook-off, um, with myself and Adair Palmer over in sunny Australia. Well, it's sunny compared to here. Um, and so we've got the cook-off there. That's always at, uh, so that's all, what time is that? That's 9 a.m. UK time, which at the moment, I think, is 6 p.m. Uh, in uh, Brisbane time. Might be a little bit, I always get confused, Ros. Um, and it's so it's a uh, it's probably half past five I think in southern Australia. I, I'd never realised until the other day that Australia had several time zones. <laughs> never, didn't even cross my mind. Um, so yes, yeah, so we got that show on Tuesday, uh, and then we've got another cooking show. We're going to start off on Thursday. Not quite sure what time yet. Um, hopefully around about lunchtime uh, Eastern, which will be uh, about five p.m in the UK and the rationale behind it is in order to actually physically teach people how to, to cook and so with a with intention so I was chatting at people that don't know the reason it's called keto Nick is because I have lost uh, this in 2021 I've actually lost 48 pounds uh, if you'd have told me that I could lose 48 pounds uh, at the beginning of the year I would have laughed at you and thought you were completely crazy um, but here we are at the end of October and uh, 48 pounds down, 38 of those for sure were thanks to my changing my diet and going going on a keto lifestyle. And it's the nice thing is I was actually asked the other day, I was, I was asked, oh, what, what are you going to do? You've got a plan for when you finish your keto diet. And I said, well, I don't consider it a diet. It's, you know, I it's a lovely way to live. I eat really healthily. I, I can eat what I like. I can still drink, which is which you know in in other diets that we've I'd, or I've tried before. You know there was a oh don't don't have any alcohol. And it's like look, I like a drink. You know so this diet is 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 great for people that, that you know don't want to make the ultimate uh, sacrifices if you like. And so it is quite easy. So it's a combination of 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 exercise and again not crazy. The thousands of pounds I've spent on gym membership over the last few years and hasn't helped whatsoever i now have no gym membership i go for a walk for minimum 40 minutes a day um, but nothing crazy that's all 40 minute walk a day but just really taking out the big carbohydrates so that's rice pasta bread and uh, potatoes so you know i know we're doing sourdough bread but the sourdough bread works because um because it's um because it's as i say the the culture because it's fermenting it's a fermentation process, so it reduces the amount of sugar in there. Um, oh, Ros, go with the Aussies, yeah. <laughs> go with the Aussies on Tuesday. It's a friendly competition. We don't care. Um, and can you come? Oh, I would love to. Yeah, as soon as one day, as soon as we've got it all sorted, uh, definitely. Um, and Corinda, you know, with Amazon, can you play music on there? Um, uh, I don't know is the honest answer, Corinda, but maybe what you want some well you want some music while i'm while i'm chatting to you uh talking but uh, but anyway back to the the new show on thursday um what i wanted to show this was the thing i was chatting to my my, my business coach who also is this carrie martins who is also this uh, 100 he's completed over 100 iron man triathlons and he's even doing some ultra iron man triathlons next year and we were chatting he was the one that taught me all about uh about the, the keto or just the weight loss and just the, the, the you know you eat for what the things that you need and um, and so we were chatting the other day and you know we both have the same opinion that despite the fact there are a plethora of uh, cooking shows on the tv um, people still can't cook they still think it's easier and quicker to go out and get a takeout and then actually i was just saying to him i said carrie i can cook a meal way quicker um, then I can go order a takeout and get it delivered. So that's what we're looking at doing on Thursday. Just me. So we're going to be looking at meals you can make in, you know, 15, 20 minutes, something like that, which brings us on to Jamie Oliver, who actually did a TV program. This is the thing. I, I do love him. And uh, he's a lovely, and he's a lovely, lovely guy. I've told the story before. Of um, I met him at the Good Food Show uh, a few years back um and he was surrounded by by these all these little bar flies and, and young girls because he was a big celebrity 
um, and we couldn't get near him. Uh, but my mother-in-law was a, a big fan. And uh, so I've just dropped, it's now in a carousel on Amazon. And I'll just obviously drop the links into the comments if you want to go and uh, check out his book. Um, yeah, so we were just all going to bed and we we're just waiting for the elevator, the lift to come down. And he walked past and I just cheekily said, I said, oh, Jane, I said, you haven't got a couple of minutes just to say hello to my mother-in-law. She's a big fan. Yeah, of course. What's her name? I said, Joan. He goes bowling up to her. Hello, darling. Hello, Joni. How are you? Well, you, uh, normally my mother-in-law is not stuck for words. But on this occasion, she just totally like, totally starstruck. But he spent a you know good few minutes with us. He didn't need to. Um, but chatting about food and, and everything. So it was lovely, lovely guy. Anyway, um, so we got to, uh, what we got there? Um, what's your comment there, Kinder? I got this error on Amazon now saying, oops, we are temporarily unable to get into conversation. Please try again later. All oh, right, yeah. Is that on the comments, Corinda, or in an email? Because it looks okay on my looks okay on my score. Anyway, so inspired by by Jamie did this a good few years ago. He did like uh, thirty minute meals, then he brought it down to fifteen minute meals, and so um, and so yeah. So um, I thought let's go re dig out his book and see see the, the what the potential things we could um, we could cook on a Thursday. Um, but one of the things he talks about here is, um, yeah, how very important how to cook fast. If you want to cook these tasty meals in 50 minutes, you must have these kitchen gadgets, utensils and bits of equipment. If you don't, you simply won't be able to get the meals done in time. This is not a complex list. And to be frank, you can pick it all up super cheap these days. And if you want to feel free to spend a little bit more if you've got it, um, a food processor, a liquidizer, stick blender, kettle, an absolute must, no compromise, they're essential. So as we all know, Hiding, hiding in the back is my Nutri Ninja Killer Blender. Um, so <laughs> we'll be using that uh, quite a bit on a Thursday. Um, but yeah, so we've got the equipment. Um, and yeah, have things near to hand. So you can have some pantry staples. But uh, but yeah, this is, you know, even on, even on like page one, beautiful photo. And again, this is how to cook really fast. And it is to, to make the food smaller. So to cook chicken really quickly, just bash it out. So on, on chicken, we can just put it between uh, parchment paper, a really top tip, parchment paper, salt, pepper, chicken, fold it over, get out your get out your wooden rolling pin, bang, 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 batten it down. And I, I do this all the time. Um, and it just flattens out the chicken, you get the lovely uh, salt and pepper in it, you can use other herbs as well, and just pan fry it. And a lot of a lot of the cooking that I do is is pan fried, not with oil or butter particularly, but pan fried in your own in your own juices. I very rarely, well, I, I pretty much never boil vegetables. I very rarely steam them. I basically let them cook in a pan under under some heat. Cooks really fast. And they're really tasty and it, it just makes a beautiful texture as well. So we've got these 15 minute meals. So um, we've got pork steaks, glazed pork fillets, Cajun steaks, Korean fried rice. We won't be doing that one. Uh, well, we can do the fried rice, but use a uh, use um, use some others. Um, chili con carne meatballs. So there you go. That's a great recipe. Um, and if you saw us on the cook off the other day, we made chili con carne. Well, I made it. Uh, bless her. Adair couldn't make it because she was uh, stuck on her boat. But yeah, chili con carne, meatballs, really, really fast things to, to make. So, and you've got veggies. So you've got a veggie, a veggie chili. So actually, I might use this uh, as a guide, a little bit of a guide for Tuesday, because we're doing um, tacos. So I'll be looking for taco fillings. Um, so let's see how, how that works out. And the uh, yeah, little things. So avocado on toast, four ways. This is the thing, guys. You can make super, super tasty uh, meals. And you know, if you're not buying the processed food, the, 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 the real, buy the real food 
and it is actually it will work out cheaper and so the other things we're going to be talking about actually granola um quinoa um we can have a little look at and that's the other thing nice about this uh, book got a bit of notes on nutrition so at the back of this book you've got all these uh, nutrition notes so um, the number of calories the amount of fat the sugar and the saturated fats so all the recipes in this book you're going to know exactly uh, what the nutritional value is so that's jamie's meals in 15 minutes and as i say that that is the thing that uh, we're going to be using well, as a guide so i won't be doing specific recipes per se but i will certainly be using that as a guide so the very last book before i before i start to cook some eggs um the last book i wanted to talk about i say and the egg cooking will take five minutes um the last book i want to talk to you about is this one it's a very little known book but it is probably the best cookbook i have and the reason i say that not because it's full of recipes or anything like that i'm just gonna put it up for the guys watching on uh, facebook and on youtube uh, it's in the carousel now on uh, on amazon but it's the flavor thesaurus okay and, and this is incredible because actually what it does is it matches up um flavors uh, superbly so um yeah you got to. so it's uh, it's it's really easy to to pick up on um so it has a circle of things which are all these flavors and so they are um uh, bramble and hedges floral fruity roasted meaty cherry earthy mustardy so like mustardy is watercress caper horseradish um sulfurous uh, you've got onion garlic truffle cabbage sweet cauliflower broccoli globe artichoke uh, asparagus eggs then you've got marine shellfish whitefish oysters caviar oily fish then you've got brine and salt anchovy smoked fish bacon fruit and it, this is the thing it is really really good um yeah this is by um who wrote it uh nikki Seg nikki signet see never heard of them i couldn't tell you whether it's a man or, or a woman but but it's really really good so as an example so let me look up eggs this is how you pair uh, things so so in the contents uh, eggs are sulfurous so go to page 106 yeah so there's no there's no pictures but what this is telling you is what what flavors match so let's go sulfurous and garlic boom, boom, boom. truffle truffle mushrooms speed here we go so egg a whole section on egg so uh, we can go with um yeah egg and anchovy egg and anise so star anise egg and asparagus i mean the asparagus with hollandaise sauce or just a poached egg is beautiful egg and bacon obviously egg and banana uh, in japan omelets called tamagyo yaki are made with soy and sugar and served in sushi bars as a savory dish the sweetened omelet has a classic status in french cuisine where it might be filled with jam and fruit um so you've got eggs and beetroot egg and bell pepper egg and black pudding egg and cabbage egg and caviar Ooh. egg and celery now there's one the only one food that i really don't like and that's celery egg and chicken egg and chili um so egg and coconut egg and cumin egg and dill egg and ginger so you've got so many different things egg and oily fish and that's the thing egg and nutmeg it's just so many things it goes with pork potato prosciutto sage shellfish a big lot on shellfish smoked fish tomato of course um egg and vanilla so this is interesting um yeah vanilla spirits away the eggy flavor that can be particularly unwelcome in pastries and desserts variously paired with cream milk sugar and flour egg and vanilla make oeuf a la neige uh, which are meringues shaped like eggs 
uh, floating in a pale custard. Uh, creme caramel, creme brulee, vanilla souffle, vanilla ice cream, crom anglaise, uh, custard, and of course, um, egg and water. So, so many different things you can do with eggs. And as you know, eggs take seconds to cook. So that's what, I, that's what I'll be using. I say it is probably the most least known but most powerful cookbook. And I, I, only, I only found out about it um, probably about 10 years ago, maybe. Um, and that was a lady that won the UK's uh, amateur master chef. At the end, she was, you know, they were saying, oh, you know, how did you get your com flavor combination? And she said, yeah, I used the flavor thesaurus. And uh, John Tarode, who's the Australian judge on it, said, oh my God, I use that all the time. And so, yeah, top, top tip. So this is where chefs get their pairings from. As I say, no pictures uh, and sometimes very little explanation, but there are several little recipes or suggestions as to how to use all these different, um, all these different flavors. I'm just looking at my, I'm <laughs> just looking at, oh, move that out of the way. I swear, I swear. I swear I saw it move. That is our sourdough mixture. It's probably just a bit of apple settling, but, <laughs> but it was good. Anyway, I need to get on and, um, and actually cook a little bit of lunch. And so today, lunch is literally just going to be some uh, egg and courgette. Light lunch. What's not to love? So super, super simple. Let's get out a really uh, small little pan, pop a little heat under it. So this is where we want to get cooking can back on. So there we go. This I love this little Brio, my little Brio webcam C920. Absolutely amazing. Uh, is it only on egg? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah no corinda it's not only it's not uh only on eggs there's lots and lots of different things um that we can do so i'm just gonna pull another little camera on yeah move this one to this one this time not face on camera no. No, mute it we just want that one thing so there you go uh so yeah so now you can see me oops and and what we're cooking so yeah super super simple so i've just got a little flame underneath the uh underneath the pan there let me move my move my mobile phone myself um and yeah just, let's do a nice quick and easy courgette so nothing fancy just gonna chop it up into little pieces in fact actually let's stick this let's stick the timer on Get a timer on this, Corinda. Let's see how quickly this uh, this takes to make. Uh, right, let's set up a timer for the next week's uh, for Thursday's cooking show, so we can make sure we've we've done it in time. And uh, this is like basically, you know, oh, it's all sorts of things. But it's basically like, be like a little frittata, something like that, a little omelet. Oops. And there's also some, there's something about chopping things up smaller that gives it the appearance that there's more of it as well. You know, it just makes things easier to eat, to be honest. And, uh, and that's it. And a little, a little one spoon. Whatever you've done. Come to daddy. Oh, we were using it for the... Uh, the culture. Hold that up. Okay. So yeah, right. Let's get this done in ten minutes. Okay. Here we have our little courgettes, merrily cooking away. A bit of salt. As I say, a bit salt. But I said no. I've not put any oil uh, or anything in there. 
like that. It's all just as it is. So I'm just going to get a couple of eggs. And of course, eggs are eggs are such a, a super super food as well. So they're always great to have in your kitchen, hanging around. Uh, three. And uh, yeah, as you can see, if you compare it with, uh, with almost anything. So get the courgettes in there. Let's just. Um... Oh, look, double yolk. Wow, this is a. That is crazy. I don't know if I'm going to show you this. I can't believe that's what's happened. Um, uh, three eggs, six yolks, all three double yolks. How amazing is that? How incredible. So, so we'll get to the little toss. And you can actually see they're, they're, you know, they, they're beginning to shine. So they little, give off this sheen. And this is one of the things I, I didn't know until years and years ago. Uh, I don't I was working and I had a lovely, lovely Indian guy, fancy, lovely old guy. Um, and uh, another Indian girl, younger girl, uh, Shakira or Shira. And, uh, and she told me how to make a, a vegetable curry. So they were trying to get me to eat hotter curry. And so, uh, yeah, the special curry. She said, "I said, oh, should I start the start them in water?" And she said, "No, just pop them in a pop them in a in a in a uh, in a saucepan on a low heat, and then start to cook start the cooking process." And uh, and yeah, you just don't need to add any water. They just naturally break down because what is in vegetables? Water. You know. That, that's what vegetables are. No, you know, what, what is in us? Water. There'd be so much, so much water in all of it. So these courgettes don't take long to cook at all. So they're pretty much done. I'm gonna just pour in. Pour in my egg. And this basically is going to become like a little omelette, really. And then we just finish it off with um, some beautiful things that we can put in our omelette. Uh, maybe just a little bit. Oh, I tell you what, I've still got some, still got some coriander. That's, that looks like it's seen other days now. I'm going to throw it away. But yeah, love coriander. So. Or cilantro, I think you call it in the States. I know some people love it or hate it. So put a bit of that in there. And uh, what else goes with coriander? Coriander also goes with um, uh, you could have tomato in there. We'll let that sit and do. So that's looking really good. Um, put a little bit more light on it. That will that will help. So yeah. So that's all we got there. So we just got uh, egg, courgette, and cilantro or coriander, as I call it. We put a little bit of um, we put a little bit of uh, salt and pepper in there. Um, and what's not to love on that? I might just finish it off with a three. So I've got them, I might just finish it off with a couple of little jerry tomatoes just to add some colour. And uh, and that will be good to go. So yeah, I think so far I think that's taken about five minutes. So super fast lunch, super healthy lunch. Um, What's not to love about that? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide it, hopefully, just slide it off the off the pan as it all cooks. 
and uh, just letting it cook in the middle. And that's, uh, that's the other thing is, you know, we, you know, don't overcook things. The, the tendency is to overcook when actually when you take things off the, the heat, uh, they're still, the cooking is still processing. There's still a cooking process going on. So particularly with meat, this is why one of the reasons we let, um, we let meat rest is because when you take the meat out of the oven or take meat off the pan, then it's still cooking. The internal temperature um, is still going to be uh, still going to be going. Um, oh, Roz, heading off to bed. I don't blame you. Yeah, head off to bed. It's very late uh, where you are. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And thank you, Corinda, as well uh, for watching as well. And if you're watching on Amazon, thank you. Do do follow me on Amazon. Uh, as I say we've got more and more uh, shows coming up. We've got the uh, for if you're tech minded. We have the Monday Tech Show with myself and Stephen Healy. Um, he is a certified guru, uh, and no mistake. Um, hi, R, R, what are you making, bro? This is like a little uh, omelette, like frittata. Um, and that's so basically, we, 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 without putting anything else in the pan, we chopped up um, uh, some, uh, uh, what's it called, courgette or zucchini. Um, we chopped that up uh, and then we started to basically toast that off in the in a in a dry pan. We then beat some eggs to, to make a little frittata, a little omelette mixture. A um, little bit of salt and pepper. We got some uh, cilantro or coriander, as we call it in the UK, uh, in there as well, just fresh. That is, um, and then we just topped it off with a few little um, flavour bombs, which are these lovely little cherry tomatoes. And so, you know, that makes just a super super easy light lunch massively keto friendly so which is what we're all about um so yeah so do uh yeah RR, if you're if you haven't already please do um please do follow uh and then you get notification uh when we go live again so that's looking good that will slide onto a plate just nice Puccini, egg salt pepper cilantro curry tomatoes we'll try looks great yeah, I mean that that's the thing. Yeah, you can I, I didn't have any curry in there, but no, you can add curry, any sort of flavours. And if you didn't see earlier, I was I was using this book. Um it's actually in the carousel, still highlighted in the carousel, the flavour thesaurus. It is the most incredible book. Um no pictures, but it just shows you how to pair flavours and just so you know that they all go together. So the proof as always. <laughs> Is going to be in the eating, so I'm going to get a bigger, a bigger plate out than that. So here we go. So that is all done. I'll be honest, for, for speed, I did, um, there you go, and that is it, and it just smells beautiful, looks beautiful, um, and I say, and just let that stand for a little bit, um, put cheese on it, absolutely, uh, yeah, Karinda, put cheese on it, totally, I'm just going to pop a little bit more salt and pepper on it, thanks, yeah, I didn't put very much on earlier on, and I do like mine quite fiery um so yeah so do let us know what um what you'd like to see us cook so on tuesday with the australia uk cook off then um then we're doing tacos uh uh adair wants them to be veggie so we'll do some veggie fillings for tacos i might throw a curveball or i'll actually just make my own taco shells as well um and then on thursday the new show will uh, be on amazon as well and that will be how to cook. That will be a, quite a shorter show on Amazon, but basically showing you how to cook healthy and fast. So, you know, I've said that we can, I can cook a dinner quicker than I can order a takeout. And so, and it will be way healthier. And the thing is, the reason people are so obese and so find it so hard to lose weight and say, I've lost 48 pounds now uh, since the end of January this year, is that, you know, so much processed food uh, which makes it hard to digest. So, cook.
cooking is so easy uh, so you'll be saving money because you won't be buying processed food you'll be making more of it and i'll come up with things that we can actually cook and make that potentially you can freeze so maybe you know you can get your kids involved on a sunday morning spend a couple of hours and actually create meals that you can freeze and then you just pull out the freezer as the as the, as the day as, as the week goes on super super easy that's you know what's what's not to love about that and that's one of the things I was chatting to with, with my coach, Carrie, who's uh, this you know, over 100 times Ironman triathlete. Uh, it still amazes me. But, um, but yeah, it's the fact that, you know, we use food for different things. So, you know, if you're doing a certain type of diet, then you might want to think about adding some vitamins in, so taking some supplements. I don't like using supplements because I think we can get everything um, fresh and, and from from its natural sources but i know if you're making a big decision so for example if you're going to be doing a going uh, keto for a long period of time um then you, know, you probably want to add some uh, vitamins uh, supplements into your diet so i'll be talking about those as well as i say i, I like to be able to do it um and then just uh, and, and just do it the natural way but you know we i and, well, i'm keto i'm i think they call it dirty keto so so I always say it's low carb, not no carb. But I say uh, the weight has fallen off. Look, you can see on my chef whites. I mean, bloody hell, they quite incredible. And um, yeah, oh, I see the zucchini tomatoes. What else is that chopped on top? I can't tell. Uh, right, chopped on top of that is that's the cilantro. That's the fresh coriander, fresh cilantro, chopped on that. Uh, chopped zucchini and uh, and chopped uh, little flavour bomb tomatoes. And so that's it. It's just to make it green. My, I know my great aunt, uh, bless her, she, she died many years ago. But when I was young, she taught me that, you know, you want colour on your plate. Always make it colour, you know. So, and it, and it's and it does. It just makes it visually more appealing if you've got that colour on your plate. So, thank you so much for watching. Please do, uh, yeah, please do follow me if you're watching on Amazon. Please do follow me. Thank you for watching it. I'm going to go eat my lunch now and uh, I'll see you all again on Tuesday. And so have, wherever you are, have the most amazing weekend. I say, if you're watching on Amazon, please do follow and then you'll get notification uh, when we go through. And as I say, if you do nothing else, please do check out. So next week, we're going to be making the bread in that bread basket. I just highlighted it in the carousel again. Um, so this is what we've got, sourdough. So if you weren't seeing earlier on, today we made our own sourdough uh, starter culture. Uh, that was just with um, that was just with what was it with 